Hello students, how are you? So my name is Deborah Bora. I'm a chemistry prof faculty by profession. So basically in this video, I'm going to deliver a presentation on colligative properties, which is in the second chapter of your class 12 chemistry. The name of the chapter is solution. So let us see now what is this colligative properties are and what are the types of colligative properties. The name colligative, the Latin meaning of this colligative means the splitting of the word colligative, co and ligar. The co means together and ligar means bind. So colligative property means binding together some of the properties. The properties that depends on the number of solid particles irrespective of their nature relative to the total number of particles present in the solution. Such properties are called colligative properties. As I have written in this PowerPoint presentation or in this video, the solutions containing non-volatile solutes. So basically, the solute that we are going to mix in the solvent is non-volatile, which exhibits some properties of its own. It depends only on the number of the solute particles, but not on the type. That is, it depends on the quantity of the solute particle, but not on the quality. Understood? So these colligative properties are mainly divided into four types namely relative lowering of vapor pressure elevation of boiling point depression in freezing point and osmosis and osmotic pressure so in the next slide we are going to discuss these four types of colligative properties in details the first topic that we are going to study is relative lowering of vapor pressure the vapor pressure of a solvent in a solution is always less than the pure solvent. So what is that means? That is the vapor pressure of a solvent until and unless it is mixed with the solute to form a solution is always more than the vapor pressure of the solvent when it gets mixed with the solute. Right? So if you just see the diagram that we have here the particles the volatile particles are just floating in that cylindrical box isn't it so it is floating till the surface but when we are going to add the non-volatile solid particles together with these volatile solvent particles then it clearly shows that the rate of vaporization decreases isn't it so the rate of vaporization decreases as well as the vapor pressure decreases when we add non-volatile solid particles together with the volatile solvent particles to understand this topic mathematically let us establish a relationship between the vapor pressure of the solution together with the mole fraction and the vapor pressure of the solvent so here the vapor pressure of the solution is given by p1 and the mole fraction is given by x1 and the vapor pressure of the solvent is given by p01 isn't it so p1 is equal to x1 p01 as we have already discussed in the last slide that when we mix non-volatile solute together with the volatile solvent then the vapor pressure decreases that decreasing or increasing of the vapor pressure whatever it is it's represented by del p1 so we can write del p1 is equal to p01 minus p1 already you know what is p01 and p1 isn't it so p01 minus p1 here the term p1 in place of this p1 from the above equation i can easily write p01 minus p01 into x1 in the next step, if I take P01 as common, then P01 bracket 1 minus X1 bracket close. So the final step till now is represented by that is the change in the partial pressure or change in the vapor pressure is given by del P1 is equal to P01 1 minus X1. Also from the previous class, that is from class 11 till now we have read that the mole fraction of the solute plus the mole fraction of the solvent is equal to unity right x1 plus x2 is equal to 1 so in place of this 1 minus x1 i can easily write x2 so the net equation till now can be written as del p1 is equal to p not 1 into x2 
It is also possible to calculate the molar mass of a non-volatile non-electrolytic solute by measuring the vapor pressure of their dilute solution. So let us modify the previous equation that is del P1 equal to P01 X2 like this that we have written here that is del P1 divided by P01 is equal to X2 right. So in the next box you can see that del p1 has been expanded to p01 minus p1 divided by the p01 will remain same equal to in place of x2 that is a mole fraction just expand it according to the formula that is x2 is equal to number of moles of solute divided by total number of moles that is number of moles of solvent plus number of moles of solute right equal to now in case of number of moles of solute it is written as given mass by molar mass divided by given mass of the solvent into mole divided by molar mass of the solvent plus given mass of the solute divided by molar mass of the solute as we know in a dilute solution the number of solute is very small not very small it is very very small as compared to the number of moles sorry the number of particles of the solvent so by rearranging the following we can write the formula as it is given in the last box that is p01 minus p1 divided by p01 is equal to small n by capital n and it is being expanded as follows the next colligative property that we are going to study here is elevation in boiling point. According to it, the vapor pressure of a liquid increases with increasing temperature. And it occurs only when the boiling point of a liquid increases when we add another compound to it that is another solute and that solute should be or must be a non-volatile solute. Here in the below diagram, you can easily see that we have two curves. In this graph, we have two curves. One curve that is the orange line curve is for the solvent and the blue, dark blue line curve is for the solution, right? The previous, according from the, between these two curves, the solvent curves come at first and the solution curve comes to the second, right? So here the temperature of the solvent, you can see on the x-axis that it is represented by T not B. That is, it is the temperature or it is the initial temperature or the temperature of the solvent until and unless it is being mixed with the non-volatile solute. After a non-volatile solute is been mixed, the boiling point increases with it to reach that boiling point the temperature should also increase right when we increase the temperature the next temperature that you can see on the x-axis is tb right so here the previous temperature of the solvent is represented by t not b and the next temperature that is the temperature of the solution is represented by tb from the previous graph diagram, we can easily now see that the increase in the boiling point that is del Tb is equal to difference between Tb minus T not B. That is T not B is equal to the boiling point of the pure solvent and Tb is the boiling point after the solute is being mixed. Also, in a dilute solution, the del Tb that is the increase in the boiling point or the change in the boiling point is directly proportional to its molality. If we remove the proportionality sign, we will be writing as del Tb is equal to Kb into M, where Kb is the constant of proportionality, also known as the boiling point elevation constant or the molar elevation constant, also ebulioscopic constant. The unit of Kb is K into Kz into per mole, right? As you move further in this chapter, we will be needing to find out the molar mass of the solute by using these formulas. And in order to find out the molar mass of the solute, first we have to find the molality of the solution that is M is equal to W2 given mass by molar mass divided by the given mass of the solvent divided by 1000. When we arrange this formula, we get 1000 into W2 divided by capital M2 into W1. Here, when we substitute the del T K M with the values of del T B, that is from the previous equation, that is del T B equal to K B into M, we can write 
in place of this small m is equal to del tb is equal to kb into 1000 into w2 divided by m2 into w1. Since similarly, as now we have replaced the small m, we can also replace the capital M2 or we can easily find out the molar mass. We just need to arrange the formula in respect to that part. So here the denominator that is the M2 that is the molar mass of the solute is in the denominator part. So we will be just cross multiplying or we will be taking it in the other side. So it will be M2 is equal to 1000 into W2 into KB divided by del TB into W1. Now we have come to the third colligative property or the third type of colligative property that is the depression in freezing point. If we like to compare it with the boil elevation in boiling point, then the graph looks little bit of similar. But here the temperature will not rise. Here the temperature will decrease or the freezing point will decrease when we add solute to the pure solvent. As you can see the graph below, here also the liquid solvent or the pure solvent is being represented by the orange curve. Just below it, we have the solution curve, sorry, solution curve that is the blue curve. The line joining the both the curves is the frozen solvent. That is when to the pure solvent, we are going to mix solute, then the temperature decreases and froze the solvent you can see on the x-axis or the temperature axis that here also the liquid solvent or the pure solvent is being represented by t not f and after the solute is being mixed that is when the solution is being formed the temperature decreases gradually decreases to tf and that is it is being represented by tf okay here the mathematical terms or the mathematical equation of depression in freezing point we can see here that is del tf is equal to t not f minus tf that is in details if i can see down depression in freezing point is equal to freezing point of the pure solvent minus freezing point of solution here we are writing the freezing point of the pure solvent Firstly, because you can see in the graph that is the freezing point of the pure solvent will be higher because as we are mixing the solute, the freezing point decreases. That is the freezing point of the solution decreases. So first we are writing the freezing point of the pure solvent minus freezing point of the solution. In case of experimentally finding methods, we can find the depression in freezing point by Beckman's thermometer method and Raff method. Understood? Also, like in the slide of the elevation in boiling point, you have seen that del TB is directly proportional to molality. Also, here del TF is also directly proportional to molality. When we remove that proportionality sign, we will be getting one more constant here. That is del TF is equal to KF into M. Here KF is the depression constant or the cryoscopic constant. The unit of KF is given here. That is K into KZ per mole. Understood? From here also, I can easily find out the molar mass of the solute. As we go through, we have two detailed formulas by which I can easily find out the molar mass of the solute. The derivation of this is same as that of the elevation in boiling point. Only the difference here, we are using del TF in place of del TB and KF in place of KB. So this is the same formula. I can easily find out the molar mass of the solute when we are given the freezing point terms. Also downward, if I have to find out the latent heat of fusion, we have one more formula that is KF is equal to RT square divided by 1000 into LF, where R is the gas constant, is the temperature 1000 into LF, that is LF is the latent heat of fusion, and KF you already know, that is the cryoscopic constant, or the depression constant. So students, we have came to the last type of colligative property, that is the osmosis and osmotic pressure. If I try to define the osmosis, we can simply say that the process of flow of a solvent is called osmosis.
This flow of solvent will be continuing until and unless an equilibrium is reached. That is, it will be equal in both the side. The flow of a solvent from its side to the solution side. So ultimately, if I say from one side, from the solvent side to the solution side, so the solvent side is what? It is less thick than the solution side because in the solution side we'll be having solid particles right so the flow continues from the solvent side to the solution side and it when we say that the flow goes in and out there should be a barrier there must be a barrier from where i can say okay it is going in it is going out that barrier is in the form of a membrane. It is known as the semi-permeable membrane. In the semi-permeable membrane, the solid, the particles or the like water solvent particles can flow through easily, but the bigger molecules can pass through easily. So it is the easiest way to filter out the bigger or the macromolecules from the micromolecules. After an equilibrium is reached, it stops. But we can also stop it before it reaches equilibrium. How? By applying an external pressure. That external pressure that we apply to just stop the flow of the solvent is called the osmotic pressure of the solution. As you have seen in the last colligative properties, that is in the elevation and boiling point also, the depression and freezing point that Kb and Kf are proportional to molality. Here, osmotic pressure is proportional to the molarity which is given by capital C of the solution at a given temperature which is denoted by capital T. Here, the osmotic pressure is denoted by pi and R is the gas constant. So, the net equation is pi equal to CRT. Also, if I try to expand the molarity formula that is N2 by V in place of C where N2 is the moles of the solute divided by volume of the solution in liters we get the net equation is equal to pi equal to N2 by V back at close RT. As we move further we can also expand the number of moles of the solute that is N2 into given mass by molar mass that is in place of N2 I can easily write W2 by M2. So I can easily reshuffle the formula that V which is in the denominator part goes up. So it is written as pi V is equal to W2 by M2 RT. Understood? So the upper formula that is pi equal to N2 by V RT is now being transformed into pi V equal to W2 by M2 RT. After that, to find out the molar mass of the solute, the formula is being reshuffled again. M2 is equal to W2 into R into T divided by pi into V. So basically when you just compare all these formulas, all these formulas are important individually. In a given solution you have to think you have to know what are the given things on the basis of that only we can apply formula here you have got two to three so not the two to three we have got three to four formulas out of these four formulas you have to choose one and depends on that to find out what it is required here in all these formulas, the gas constant, as we all know, the gas constants have around 5 form, 5 values. Out of these, R is equal to 0 0.083 liter bar per mole per Kelvin is the value that you are going to use in this topic. Thank you.